will change you. Uh, because one of the great things about uh, our time together in worship of the Lord would also include uh, his preached word. And in this word, we're on part two. Uh, I don't know how many parts it's going to be, really, to be honest with you, but I know we're on part two of our uh, continuing topic. Uh, we've actually we started last week. Uh, God has given us every reason uh, to not have any excuse. And we're looking at the 138th, 139th, I apologize, number of Psalm. And we're going to read today verses 5, 6, and 7, and 8. 5 through 8. 5, 6, 7, 8. Of the 139th number of the song. Amen. Verses 5, 6, 7, and 8. Amen. And it reads as follows, if you will stand in reading of God's word. It won't take long. These are not long uh, stanzas. But verses 5, 6, 7, and 8 of the 139th. One, Psalms 139, 5, 6, 7, 8. Verse 5, and it reads as follows. Thou hast beset me behind and before. Y'all say the word beset. Beset. And had laid thy hand upon me. Verse 6, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Verse 7, whether shall I go from thy spirit? Or whether shall I flee from thy presence? Verse 8, if I ascend into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold. Thou art there. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. They may be seated in the presence of God's holy and righteous word. Today we're going to be looking at, again, God has taken every excuse, every reason you know, to take away every excuse from us. And today we're going to be talking about how God holds us back from ourselves. How God holds us back. From our sales. Now, friends, this sounds you know very backwards when we talk about God holding us back from our sales. How exactly does that happen? Well, one of the things that we see here, David, in his writing uh, to the chief musician, is that David is very, and I do mean extremely, pointed when it comes to his realization of his limitations. You see, a lot of us believe that we are more limited, we are, we're less limited than what we really are, and that we're just living life aimlessly. We're living life with no constraints. We have absolutely no guardrails. We, we don't have anything going that helps to limit us from where it is we, we actually, or how far we need to go off the beaten path. We can just go because we just want to. And we somehow have become, well, I don't know, we've become enamored. We've become, we've, felt, we've fallen in love. We're thinking that doing what I want to is going where I want to, however I want to go. Now recognizing that there is a purpose for us going anywhere we go, doing anything we do, and then having the, the charge to be able to know that there is a providence, there has to be a provision that is given in order for us to approach doing anything that we do and however we do it. And that, that provision is always given by God. But here's the thing, God cares so much about his children. God loves his children so much, those that call themselves ch children of God, that God will limit us. How many, how many of us have ever heard the expression not giving, being given enough rope to hang ourselves? Y'all y'all heard that before? Amen. It comes from this particular passage here. And in this particular passage here, sometimes, y'all, we think that we that the rope be so long 
and the rope is so very the, the rope is so very loose that we just keep walking and we'll end up walking down a cliff still tied to a rope that's still going but God cares so much about his children he will hold us back from even ourselves now I know that that sound, we say, well, why is it that God has to limit us? I don't want to be limited. I want to be in a position where I can be free. Friends, how many of us recognize that that's the same thing as freedom? Freedom is always, a, there's always a limited factor to freedom. Freedom doesn't mean that we can do what we want to do, however we want to do it, whenever and how, throughever we want to do it. But freedom means, or maybe it's better for me to, to, to help us with this word that the Bible uses, especially over in 1 Corinthians. But the, the thing that we may, may need to understand that there is a difference between freedom and liberty. Amen. There is a difference between having the liberty to do something and the freedom to doing something. Amen. And friends, the freedom to doing something means you don't really have a real direction that you're going. You don't know what the purpose is that you're traveling down the road. You don't have an idea of what it is that you do with what it is and what wherever moment that you have in, in this span of time. You, you got the freedom to go anywhere, but the liberty, God is, what he wants to do is set you at liberty to be able to exist and to be able to thrive in him. Yes. This is what David was telling us in verse 5. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thy hand upon me. That means God had taken the time to limit me when I was too foolish to know where I was going. God was able to take me and say, you know what? I thought that I can go this way because how many of us base where we're going and how we're doing it and how we're approaching life on feeling? Amen. How many of us base everything that we are doing based on how I feel about it instead of actually acknowledging where God leads me to? God's leadership should take precedence over our feelings because we can feel one way in a second and feel a completely different way a second from now. Right, right. And so what happens is, is the fact that God therefore besets me. In other words, he limits me. He holds me back. He places boundaries in my life so that I am directed in a way that is most, because y'all realize that I, I don't know about y'all, but maybe, me, maybe I'm talking about me. I am finite. In other words, I don't have I, I, I don't have eternality except what God gives me. Right. And so what happens is I don't I didn't exist before, and I don't exist except through the Lord later on. And so what happens is is that when I find myself going through the measures of life, I have to be directed in such a way that not only am I being productive, but I'm also in, I'm, 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 I'm adhering to the light that only God can provide that rests inside of me. That is my limited factor. How many of us know in the fifth chapter of Matthew that Jesus said on the sermon of the Mount Discourse that to let your light so shine among men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. That is the purpose that we have been given to live. And so in order to live according to the purpose that we have been given, there has to be something that limits us from the standpoint, not of our freedom, but of the, that directs us through our liberty. Right. Amen. And our liberty is extremely important to God because God wants to break chains in our lives. God wants to allow us to be able to not let things that has so easily beset us before to beset us. God wants to be able to allow us to be overcomers of this world because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. God wants us to be able to look at him and say, now unto you who's able to keep me from falling and to present me faultless before his own presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior. Be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and 
forever. And even June said that you are my limited factor because it's only you that can keep me from falling. Man. See, God sometimes has to protect us from our sins. Yes. Yes. And sometimes protecting us from ourselves is a very hard thing. Yes, yes. Because we want to feel what we want to feel. Right, right. Because we want to do what we want to do. When I was a little boy, my mama, <laughs> mama used to say this all the time. I said, Mama, when am I ever going to get old enough? I said to her. When am I ever going to get old enough to do what I want to do? Uh, yeah. And y'all must have been in the conversation. My, my mama said, now, now that day ain't never going to come. Okay. And she said, I said, mama, you mean to tell me when I get grown, I can't do what I want to do when I want to do it, however I want to do it? She said, nope. Because, see, there's limiting factors to what it is that you got to do. She said, you know, one thing that you got is law. Yeah, that's one thing that limits you. Because whether you like it or not, you just can't go up, go, you're tracing up in somebody's house uninvited and just start taking things. That's just not a good thing. You right. got a limiting factor. Mm. The other side of the coin, my, my mama said, was that the fact that you can't just be going it up just because somebody made you mad and made you feel a certain way that you can go ahead and take care of them and eradicate them off the face of the earth just because that's what you feel like doing. There's a limiting factor right. that is tied to all of that. But Mama also says something else. She said there's a limiting factor that's tied to the fact that even when you got you got a family that's looking to you to model some type of behavior to help you understand that there is a such thing as authority. And that authority is not there just to basically lower on you. No, that authority is there so that you understand what your role is in making this a functional society. See, that is actually the limiting factor of your existence. So why is it that that's a limiting factor of my existence? Because of the fact that God is a limiting factor to our just getting in our own way. Because, see, we can go ahead and go to a pathway that's wide. We can go through a gate that's wide. We can go everywhere that we want to go, but Jesus said that, listen, there's a limited factor into the path that you travel because straight is the way and narrow is the gate. And if you understand that straight is the way and narrow is the gate, there's limited factors because you can't go side to side thinking that you're going to be moving forward at the same time. There has to be a limited factor to the path that you're traveling down. And in the limited factor of the path you're traveling down, you need to know where the objective is that you're traveling to. Let me help you understand the objective of where you're traveling to. It's right here in our lesson today. He says, listen, verse 6, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain to it. No matter what direction I feel like I want to go, I won't be able to receive the kind of knowledge that God is capable of delivering to me, except for this one thing. When I recognize that whether shall I go from thy spirit or whether shall I free, flee from thy presence, I can recognize as long as I'm walking with the Lord, as long as I'm walking with his presence, that everywhere at the same time is the God that will direct my path. Y'all remember when Solomon wrote in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, he said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall that is a limited factor there, y'all. He shall direct thy path. He will keep you if you understand that he is the one that is leading you down the path of your life. He's the one that keeps you trying to tear up your own self. He is 
is the one that's able to lift you when you're low. He's the one that walks through the valley of the shadow of death when you are in the midst of thinking that you are all by yourself. He's the one that lets you know that he is the wheel in the middle of a wheel. He is the one that will let you know that in spite of all of the things that you may go through, there's still a table prepared for you on the other side of through. He will anoint your head with some oil. He will allow you to know that in despite of everything, there's a limited factor to capture your blessing. There's a cup that's about to run over. So that the only thing you have left is surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, shall track me down, shall keep me from beating up myself, shall keep me from destroying myself, and it shall track me down all the days of my life. And I can dwell in the house of the Lord Forever, there's a limiting factor for keeping me from tearing myself up. Right, right. Right. Oh. There's a limiting factor. Yes. And see, here's the thing. The thing is, is the fact we can't get away when we recognize yeah, yeah. who God is for ourselves. We can recognize this is my last thing. Oh, I'm doing pretty good today, y'all. <laughs> and I, I promise you, I'm about to sit down. But the best thing is, is the fact that, verse 8, if I ascend up to heaven, thou art there. Let me stop right there. How are you going to ascend to a place you don't know how to get to? Right, right. You got to have a limited factor to direct your paths. Yes. And that's Jesus. Jesus. You have to have, when I say limited factor, the, what limits the limited factor, my friend? is the unlimited measure of who God is. See, he's the only one unlimited. It's when we think of ourselves more highly than we all think that the limiting factor is ourselves. Right. And that's, 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 that's the wrong thinking. And that's what makes us have to feel like the pressure's on for us to have to do and for us they have to go get. And for us to maintain ourselves. But see, that's what Paul was trying to tell the church of Philippi. That he will supply you all of your needs. According to his riches and glory. He doesn't have limits. While we do. We are the empty picture before the full fountain, which is the Lord. We don't have the ability to go everywhere at the same time. To, to have all power in heaven and earth in our hands. Right. And to know everything there is to know. We don't have that ability. But God also tells us this. He promises because he said we don't give you any secret knowledge. He said I will give wisdom to all men liberally to those who ask for it and are brave not. See, that's what God does. And when God shows up and shows out, sometimes every now and then he shows us how much he really loves us and how much he really cares. He besets us. And, and, and then right there, that, that first five, ain't it? Thou hast beset me behind and in front of me before. And thou hast laid hand upon me All right. to keep me from tearing myself up. Right. Every now and then he's got to put his hands on me. Right. Listen, there's a song right now that says something that has been a common theme of what we've been talking about today in this service. He said, listen, time is filled with swift transition. Come on. Not on earth unmoved can stand. But here's where the limiting factor comes in so we don't tear ourselves up. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging and y'all know the y'all know the refrain though like don't you? Hold to his hand. 
God's unchanging hand. Right, right. You ought to, the deacon sometimes say, you ought to hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Right. You ought to build your hopes on things eternal that which you can't get away from. Whether you go and ascend up to heaven, build your hopes on things eternal. When you, if you should make your bed in hell, build your hopes on things eternal. Listen, every now and then, he's got to get in front of you to stop you from moving. Every now and then, he's got to pull the rope to keep you from going too far. And every now and then, the same God who loves us is the same God that tells us and has a wonderful written note to us called his word. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones who hear me know they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me. So, so we can stop with this, I don't, nobody loves me. Amen. We can stop with this tearing ourselves up because we feel lonely but not recognizing we'll never walk alone. Right. And then stop telling ourselves that God must can't stand me because he won't let me do nothing. What you might want to say is, Lord, thank you for not letting me fall off that cliff. Yes. Thank, you thank you for not letting me get drowned in that water yes. that I wanted to wade in. Proverbially speaking, metaphorically speaking. Right. He can thank you, Lord, thank you. for letting me be able to continue in your presence even though I made some wicked decisions mm. concerning myself. Right. Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your thank grace. You. And we have it, my friends, and we become a child of God when we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts that Jesus was risen from the dead and we shall be saved. So, what is being saved for us? Being saved from us is keeping us safe in his arms. Keeping us safe in his arms means, friends, that we can't always do what we want to do. But we can always do what he directs us Amen. to do.